Whereas, welcome to the Tony Awesome Fishing Show. I am out aboard one of the old 50 year old wooden boats down off the south coast, bobbing around. A bit, a bit lumpy actually, but word is out. Now, you know, they get those big bluefin tuna around, they do get those around, but I've been talking to some divers this is the last two or three weeks, and they say they've been seeing. 20 to 30 pound tuna, okay, close to shore because it's diving area. Well, to me, that smacks of albacore tuna. Albacore is a long fin. I caught them in Greece, I caught them uh, in the Aegean, I caught them off South Africa. They're not a huge tuna, they don't grow much more. I think the record's about 60, 70 pound is the world record. But they do come to British waters. Now, years ago, there was a commercial fishery that the Spanish people used to come with poles, outriggers on the side of their boats, and they would troll between Land's End and Wolf Rock, fishing for and catching albacore tuna, the longfin tuna for their market. I guess the next place you would get them would be Ireland, where you can go offshore and catch them there. But I know a guy off the Isle of Wight many, many years ago that used to get little squid lures off me when I used to go to the States, and he was catching albacore tuna then quite regularly, two, three, four a session. So it got me to thinking, if they're 10 pounds, 15 pounds, they, I feel they've got to be either very small, immature, big eye tuna, or they've got to be the albacore, the long fins. So I thought, how can I set up and have a go for them? going in close to shore. So you can't go out a long way, it's just an old plodding wooden, wooden boat. But albacore generally don't really go chumming, you can catch them on the troll. So I'm going to be trying, because I've done a lot of big game fishing before, I'm going to be trying this. Okay, this is a chin weighted split tail Boston mackerel. It's rubber, it has a split tail. We do it with dead baits for trolling because if you split the tail and just keep the bend of the hook just sort of up from it, it gives a lot more movement to it. This one is a rubber one with a big hook and a chin weight there. You can see that it's called an egg sinker, crimped on. It's got however much, six, eight, ten feet, probably, probably ten feet, I should think. I've got my 50 wide reel here, just in case there's any 40 or 50 pound albacore there. This is what these divers have been telling me. 15, I suppose they reckon they're 15 pounds. Maybe they're five pounds and they look magnified because they're looking through snorkel glasses. You know, I don't know. But also down off the south coast, down the Cornwall area, there was a big eye tuna caught in a harbour off the shore. That's right. I think it stands as a shore record. I'm not sure. I'm also going to be used for surface activity what's called a bird. This goes across the surface of the water, towed, and it's just slapping like this. It's just skipping and slapping. It creates a sort of effect of something trying to escape on the surface, and then behind it, so say 10 feet behind it, is Mr. Mackerel, who looks like he's chasing this teaser, this bird, it's called a teaser. On there I've got, I can see somebody's going to start selling all these now, aren't they? Yeah, I can bet you are. I bet you are, pal. Selling them now, big time. Probably sold out already. You can get big, strong snap shovels here. I've got a stainless th uh, steel thimble there as well, so it doesn't wear through the loop. It won't matter because this is for marlin. This is my tuna one, really, or a smaller marlin, you know, 300 pounders, that sort of size. Um, I've got a much bigger bird I use for the bigger marlin. So I thought I'm going to tow that. OK, so that's, that's, tro that's trolling. Look, probably blank, but somebody's got to try it. Somebody has to do it, don't they? What else am I going to do? Mm, something different. Maybe you guys haven't seen this before. I'm almost, almost 100% sure. And somebody will say, oh, I could sell those. Deep trolling. Deep trolling with feathers, lures, spinners for bass. Now, I've used these pretty extensively in 80 to 100 feet of water for big salmon. Chinook, springs, same fish, king salmon, it's the same one. They grow to over 100 pounds. I suppose average would be 15s, that sort of size. But deep water off the west coast of Vancouver Island. So I thought, I'm trying this over here. Because I know it'll work, I know it'll work. I've used, I've used it before for Pollock, down off the, uh, down the Manacles area many years ago. I used to catch Pollock down there. Years before, anybody else was doing it really. 
set of four mackerel feathers there, just regular four cheapo mackerel feathers. I've got a spinner on the end at the back, let's clean that off a bit. I've got a spinner on the end there. That's just basically, so when I'm trolling, is to straighten out the feathers so they're not whipping around too much. So what I then do, it's just, it's standard, we used to use a big trolling vein, uh, what's called a flasher for the salmon when I used to do a lot of it. You would, you would, you would set it whatever you wanted as a trip weight. Now, how can I show it to you there? Can you see there's a groove cut in it, it's semi-circular, sort of kidney shaped. It's got a brass ring there and it's got two little slots down there which you can pop your line out of if that makes sense or you can cut your line and go through the top two little loops there but the idea is that you can pop a line off and put a different weight on there now this is sliding now it stops when it gets to the swivel at the end by your feathers but you set this not by the feathers because it's going to spook any fish let's say 20 feet back 15 or 20 feet you let it go out now you have a locking pin there can you see it that that bit there all new stuff someone's bound to sell them deep water trolling for Paul Beagles yes this is the kiddie for it you pinch your line in between there okay so it has to go that way it won't trip the other way it's got to be with the ring at the back now these are Canadian so I guess you'll get them somewhere in Canada that's where I get them, Canada. So what happens when you get to take this end, the lure end, this goes up to your rod, it's like that. I hope you guys can see what it's like there. When a fish pulls it, it trips out from that spring there. Pop. See it go down? Releases it. This then free slides all the way down and stops on your swivel down by your feathers or your swivel to your trace and your big lure if you're bass fishing. But I mean, that's, that's the principle of it. Hopefully you can see that. So you can, look, get a looper line, tuck it under those arms, under those arms, and take them off the lead. I, I haven't bent those back far enough yet. So that's all that matters is you get the little knit in there. Now, depending on how tight you want it, you can pull that right in the bottom or you can leave it near the top. I'll show you again. Fish is going to take on the left. Watch the line. Bang, boom. Straight down, straight down. So we give that a go, a little pull around there because I can run the two together, you see, I can run the teaser and that split tail Boston mackerel on the top for albacore tuna because the, the, the uh, teaser will actually, the bird lure will keep it up on the top and that may, means I can drop a lure down. If I do pick anything up, I might wind the, you know, the Boston mackerel in and then just fish a pair of trolling rods. First, I think I'm going to have a go on the anchor and see what I can catch on the bottom. So I'm going to be using small hooks, strips of mackerel and segments of prawn. I've already bait, baited up my feathers and dropped, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I, just, I just baited these up and dropped them down. It was just a set of mackerel feathers that I was showing you on that trolling outfit. But I, instead of just leaving them on the bottom, I put little strips of bait on there. Uh, there's fish on there, I wonder if there's even mackerel, there might be bigger mackerel on there you go. Mackerel or mackerel, but of course you've got to catch your mackerel first guys. So there's at least there's some life down there. He's fell hooked, it's not even his lucky day. Well, as you can see, this is a big heavy wooden boat and he's pitching around all over the place. It's a horrible day in, in respect of the wind with the tide. It's very, very lumpy. It's, it's, a, ooh, it's, it's the lumpiest I've, I've known it down here, to be honest. Very uncomfortable sea. Lead at the bottom, set of mackerel feathers, just like washing line, look there. Just drop them straight down to the bottom. Wind up maybe a foot. That way, any rise and fall with the boat, you can leave them, which is what I was doing, to fish for themselves. And now I can probably drop another rod down. God, I can hardly stand up. Now this is where, this is a, a good sea boat but it's a mono hull and a mono hull is going to rock and roll a bit more. Better for running through the sea but I will much sooner have my cathedral hull boat high sea drifter much flatter. You don't get pitched all over the place like this as you do in a mono hull. So I'm going to drop that down. Oh they're on it straight away. What the heck was that? I felt something banging away. Are they bream? 
Look, 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 look. I've got fish on, guys. I've got... This is going to be a mackerel fest. Oh my god, that, that won't be that won't be difficult. November and a mackerel fest. This feels like a bigger fish. I did wonder if the big mackerel are going to be deep. I don't. Oh, look at this one. That's an eater. I know that's an eater. Oh my word. There's only one place he can go. In there to be processed later. I think I better get straight back down because this could be a tidal thing, guys. Well, you can see just putting a little strip on that uh, set of feathers has made all the difference. I brought a couple of frozen mackerel out with me, luckily, just for conger baits and stuff like that. If I did want a bit of bottom fishing, but the object was to try that trolley. I just hit the bottom, put it in gear, and I just leave it down tight. You want it? I can't feel any fish on it again then. See, so look, I've got the rise and the fall. It doesn't work quite so much on a flat, calm sea, but this method can sort of fish on its own. So, there's probably still a little bit of ice left in those prawns. So I'm just going to get this. bait up just this hook with a bigger trace on it for whatever's down on the bottom who knows and that way I can get a couple of rods down just fishing I have got a chum block with me I sort of not sure whether to put it down or not to be honest it's pitching around so much I'll be adding to it the boat's sort of all over the place on the anchor rope so I'm just going to lob this one away so it's doesn't go up under the uh, anchor rope hopefully. Don't want to let it down too fast. Strange I got those couple of mackerel straight away and now I'm there looking at the rod you can see it just it just bangs on the bottom every now and then. That's down. Check drag. And that one can fish away and do what it wants up there. It's one of those I can sort of forget. I need to put some small hooks down, very small. I'm going to use the Franken rod, people. That's this one. Anybody who's seen it, it's got a draw handle for a rod butt, a snapped off carp rod, a top of another rod glued into it there, and taped up, arrow die, reel on it, rings ripped off, one, two, three, four, five smaller intermediate rings, because it was giant carp rings and I'm going to drop this down with uh, some very small hooks and possibly segments of prawn, see what we can find down there. So this is the famous, world famous Frankenrod. Hello, just look, look, just watch that one guys. So it's either small fish hammering on that carcass or there, there is a customer there already. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to bother. I don't think I'm going to bother with the shark chum today. It's just too lumpy and too all over the place. It's really. Oh, am I in the bottom? I just had bites on that. Watch, watch, watch. As soon as you put the camera on anything. Oh, look, 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 there you go. Should be holding the rod, Graham. I wonder if they're black bream. Billy two rods in action again. This is very snaggy there. I think I'm going to lose some gear. Okay, he's dropped it, whatever it was, or he's pulled it off. I better check it. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's on the baited feathers. That doesn't feel like a mackerel, that feels more like a doggy. It's a fish, boys. It's a fish. Well, I was going to go troll him, but it makes you wonder. It's a doggy. 
not a good sign, generally means I'm over sand, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to, I felt snaggy on that. Mr. Dogfish on a set of feathers. This time I'm going to put a piece of prawn on that bottom hook, because most of the fish you generally will get on the bottom two hooks on a set of mackerel feathers, and you get the higher swimming species, coalfish, pollock and stuff, mackerel, on the, say, the top two or three hooks, and near the bottom you get, say, small conger, pouting, the bottom, did something stop me on the way down? The bottom feeding species. All right. I see I'm not going to get this other small frankenrod down. All right, looks like some semblance of normality has transpired aboard this vessel. Lead on the bottom, a ready-made rig of 50 pound test. I'm going to move this way because the wind is howling. Tiny, tiny piece of mackerel skin, really, and two pieces of prawn on, they're about size four freshwater hooks. I'm going to drop them this side, I think. Now that could get something unusual, it could get the mackerel, could, well, anything, anything, anything. There's another boat just fishing over there, I guess they're after mackerel. I don't know if they're anchored or not, to be honest. Seems to be a sort of wind against tide, and there's one, two or three in here. You've just got to come off of that cliff a bit, off here, and it's really, really uncomfortable and nasty and rolly and lumpy. It's a really sort of breakfast over the side type of uh, day. And cold, cold wind with it. I want to say it's due east. It's never good. The wind is in the least, the fishes bite the least. Frank's down. The old Frank and Rod is down. Okay, now we'll sort out this one. I saw a little quiver then, I saw a little quiver. Just raise it so it's just, just bumping the bottom with those feathers. Right, customer on the Frankenrod. Not very big, but he's on small hooks. Be interesting to see what it is. Might be a pouting, might be a mackerel. Don't think it's a dogfish. Oh, a tail hook mackerel. Gratefully accepted. Nice one too, look at the size of that mackerel. He's taken the hook and entangled up because I probably wasn't watching. Well, it's gone quiet on the small hooks, but Dogs are back. I'm surprised the congreel hasn't taken that one. Could be a customer, could be a dogfish. Probably a doggy. But it's a fish. And that's on the same bait I had just now. Oh, it might, no, no, it might be a small conger. That would be nice. That would be nice. Holy cow, that's a big dogfish. That is a big dogfish. I think that's the biggest dogfish I've ever caught in my life. My goodness. Guys, I joke not. Look at the size of that doggy. That's two and a half, two and a half feet long. That is a big dogfish. Wow. Not a record though. Getting a bite on this one, guys. Hopefully it hasn't taken me into a, a rock crevice or anything like that, anything nasty. That's a whole mackerel head. Could be just a doggy nibbling away. Just tighten up on him a second. I think he's dropped it. He's either dropped it or had it off. I'd better check it.
Well, I'm going to wind up and have a move and try and shore people. Uh, it's gone very quiet here. There's some are tiny on this one. And this one is almost the monster of the deep. And uh, this is what the conger, pet small pouting. That's what the conger will be feeding on. So I'm kind of surprised I haven't had a conger. But we're feeding generous, so we won't use him for conger bait. He's gone down. He took a little strip of mackerel. But I'm not getting the bites I should be getting on these small hooks. That's what's bothering me, you know. Nobody seems to be doing anything around me. They're all just sort of dozing in the boats, getting pitched and tossed around. So I figure, as the saying goes, if nothing's happening, make something happen. So I'm going to go inshore. I think I am going to fire out my chum bag and just see what happens. There's just nothing on the bottom. It's weird. I might go in there and there's too much tide. I don't know. But it's got to be worth a shot. I'm going to keep moving, moving, moving. And then I'll go trolling, finish off the day trolling. That's when I fancy my chances of one of those albacore tuners. So guys are in late afternoon, the divers, when they uh, saw these fish. Look. These things travel at like 10 knots. They eat at 10 knots underwater. Boom, boom, boom. So they're probably long gone, but you never know, do you? Somebody has to be the first one to do it. Right. Hello, hello, hello. Hang on a minute. Is that just spinning? Yeah, there's a fish on that. I was just about to put my shark line out. Probably another doggy. Look at that Frank and Rob band, people. I don't know, I've got my butt pad uh, but ready to go in the butt pad, and I think, yeah, he's come off. Happy days, happy days. So here is my, my sharp rig. A nice big mackerel, it's a frozen one. Go through the nose once, put a split in the back to take the hook steel trace but because the tide's so strong I've got about five ounce lead there help to take it down on a rubber band so I can just grab it and snap it off I just lay it in the water make sure it not, doesn't tangle and look, I'm looking at it under the water I say I just want it hanging I don't want it spinning I just gradually pay out the line to roughly where I want it peel the line through I just want it about 15, 20 feet down, but with this tide, it's going to swing up. So I'm going to put it there. My fully patented selfish release clip held on there onto an old net caught float. Does the job, you can see. And that'll pull free if I do get a take, and then I'll just gradually peel that. You can see how fast that's going. Look, that's, I would not want to be falling in the water. Anybody know uh, the Spike Milligan sketch where he goes, it's falling in the water. Who can tell me where it's from? And he had another chap there. He sounded like a cake, but he talked, hello, my name is, what is my name? My name is Eccles. <laughs> I've just been blown up. Of course, young people won't realise who it is. There might be a few old people out there who know who Captain Bloodknock and all the rest are. Which show were they on? Radio show. Television wasn't even invented then, guys. Seriously. Right, I'll run that back a bit farther. Should I hook a shark, anything bizarre happens. I got my slicks halfway back to Torquay by now. I've, the uh, anchor is buoyed off there so you can drop it over. Obviously it's all going to be a bit crash bang, what if I do or anything? Right, switch these over. Big boy goes in there. All set. Happy. Now I concentrate, I might have to do a running ledge on one of these rigs. And bigger weights by the look of it. Well, the reason I came in here, you might ask yourself, is absolutely highly technical. It's based on the majority of things being four. I actually saw four cormorants in a row along here. 
and I thought, well, they're working. They might have been a family, I don't know. But I figured it's worth a go. But what did make me a little bit trepidatious as soon as I got here was not the fact that it was awful weather. It's, it's, it's gone down a touch. It's gone down a touch. I am... There's the last boat going in. I am the last man standing. Well, I literally am standing. I'm looking around. There is not one other boat I can see anywhere on the horizon. Oh, I've seen some albacore birds over there. That's pretty well what I'm hanging on for. I, I've got to watch for terns because terns feed on smaller bait fish uh, than the bigger gulls. And if they're going for small bait fish, the smaller tuna, the albacore, is going to be going after the smaller bait. I have to keep an eye on those. They're way out. They're about half, three quarters of a mile away. Anyway, I did think it's going to be dead today because I saw so many birds just sat on the beach disliking this cold easterly wind, the same as I do. But I've got my chum stick out here, so whether that's going to boost anything, I don't know. But just over there, you probably won't see them. It could be the boat that went and just dumped some stuff over the side, but there are some more birds just moving a bit there, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on those. Anyway, let's see if we can get some more uh, fish out of this. A lot of these birds here, you can see, are actually after my chum slick. And that's what it's there for, not for the birds, but to attract things like pool beagle sharks. Right, heavier leads, I feel. There's plenty in that. Even, even though that's been in there 20 minutes, that's totally frozen, that block. Lovely, look at this stuff. Oh, if I took that down to West Country, I'd have blue sharks all over me. Oh, check this one out, boys. Check this one out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a chumbo, that one. That one. That one looks about a pound and a half. What a sweet one. I was just dozing off and I heard the rod going over the side, virtually. What a beaut. Again, baited feathers, guys. Well, we're getting a few baits in there now. Guys, Frankenbot's on, big time. <laughs> this feels different. This feels like the sort of fight you get from a black bream. There, I see it. I don't think this. And I just literally had that jumbo mackerel and a joey mackerel. I wonder if that chum I've got. Look at the birds up there. I dozed off about 10 minutes on the engine cover and just heard rods rattling and shaking. I saw a fish come up back there then. It's got fish eye now, that's a trouble. Sharp fin fever. I'm definitely making another one of these rods because they're, they're just fun. And they're free, absolutely free. Providing you've got the broken rods in the first place. This is either a real big mackerel. Oh, he felt he came off, he came off. Oh, you son of a gun, that was a really good fish. Decent bream or decent mackerel, he hasn't bitten me off, he's just pulled off the hooks. Sweet. I'm getting quite a few bites on baited uh, hooks now, guys. Well, Graham would be pretty unusual to get bites on unbaited hooks. You know what I'm saying, though, baited rigs. Baited rigs, right. I'm going to put another fresh bait on the bottom for the congress. No big fish at all. Just the way it is. But I'm getting knocks and bangs. I'm getting knocks and bangs on some of the uh, the baited feathers and the baited small fish rig up with the uh, Franken rod. Frank's had a few bites actually. Bites on two rods now, people. Oh, I think there's a tap. Tap on the big one. I'm going to leave Frank. I'm going to go for this one. And there he is. There's indeed life on this one. Is this another dogfish? 
The rod's a bit heavier, so... I guess, I guess it could be a doggy. That was a whole sort of Joey skeleton, hidden skeleton, so... It would be a decent doggy to get that down his neck, goodness me. No, that's not... I don't think that's a doggy. I'm going to come this side, if I can. Oh, just purely because I was getting bites on Frank there. Oh, it's spinning like a doggy now. Might be a small eel, but... Oh, it's a small conger. It's a small conger. Well, that's something different, boys. That's something different. Actually, he's not that small. Let's get him under this one. Here he comes. Here we go. Yeah, he's just a small conger. I might even get my hook back and my bait back. <laughs> Still pitching and rolling around like a son of a gun. It's about the most uncomfortable day I've ever had down here. I had it then. There he is. If I keep still while I get the hook. And he's gone. Even better, I get to grunch a hook on the bait on again. It'd be nice to get two fish on the same bait. I pay putting that fresh mackerel on. As these boys up here can smell all this chum going down there. I think what a lot of it is they can see the flash of my shark bait under the water there because they keep turning. But it's just too deep with the lead on it for them to get, thank goodness. But that's probably what's attracted them that and the smell of the chum. So we're still picking away at the fish. It's not a great day. But I've had worse. Well, slowly, inexorably, the day is turning around. This could be more mackerel. It's on the baity feathers, and they're pretty crude hooks. Oh, nice bream. Oh, ho, ho, ho. don't lift that one, Graham. Net it. Too late. I haven't got. Oh, whack, I do. That is a big bream. Just nick there. Guys, I've got to turn it that way because the sun's. Well, what sun there is the other way? That there is a prime eating bream. Lovely fish. Just nicked and he's, he's taken, did he take the prawn? No, he took the mackerel. So, black bream is still about. Looking down the barrel in November. Could, I could keep him for food, but the supermarkets are open, so let's give him a chance. They're furious, those birds. They'd have had him. There we are. Baity feathers again. Weighing them back there. I wish I could say there was some skill involved in that, but there wasn't. I didn't even see the bite, and I don't care. It's another fish. Seems to be the old chum bag. It's just giving me a bit of the edge in here. If the tide eases, if I've got enough time here, another hour or so, and I can fish over it as the tide eases. That's normally my favourite time as the tide is just starting to ease and die off. Where have all my birds gone? Over the side. Guess for it. Do what do you think, guys? Dogfish, mackerel, or what? what's it going to be? Black bream. They're nice black bream. Now, are these supposed to be a summer fish? What are they doing here? Coming in early winter? What is that all about? That's what I want to know. Look at that one, boys. Like his tide's still running. Over you go. Oh, I'm even sitting down now, boys. Got a job to beat. The dying embers. I suppose like a small conger eel again. The dying embers of an ebb tide. Oh, he's come off. 
Yeah, he's come off. It's a mayhem. Guys, I've got a fish on that one, and Frank's on. Old Frank's here. I'm just dropping down with some fresh baits on, fresh hooks, re-rigged. I've had several jumbo mackerel, haven't filmed them. Oh yeah, nice conger on this one. There we go. There we go, nice conger eel. Right, pliers. I've still got fish on the other rod, kicking around. This tells you exactly what's happened. Two bites, Billy two bites. I think there's still fish on this one. My goodness, it's about time that shark rod kicked off. The number of times I've brought it down this neck of the woods, gone to the trouble of getting all that chum out there. Beautiful late afternoon. Oh, that's a nice bream. That's a nice bream. There we go, let's get him back. Fish after fish, guys. Don't go away, I'll be coming back. I can't get these small hooks down fast enough. I retied the rigs and they were straight on it. In fact, I think they can go straight down. I don't think there's any point in. How'd you go, Frank? The Franken rod. Unpurchasable. One of a kind. It's just that dying, dying embers. Just as it fades off, the pressure fades off. I've got another load here. I told you, don't go away, I'm coming back. What have I got here? Just mayhem. Gratefully accepted on a lumpy, rocky, old, horrible sort of grey day. Just goes to show you. Last man standing again should get the fish. Well, tries, tries to. Well, I'm down to. Oh, let's get that out there. I'm down to my last camera battery, people. What a setting, though. Just wish that wind would lay down. Still, it's coming up tomorrow, so this will be the last, the last trip of the year. Uh, well, till next spring, I guess. Let's keep shaking that bag. There's still plenty coming out. Look at it, man. If I was a shark, I'd be in there. Boat's covered in scales, hands are covered in scales, sandwich covered in scales, the lens is just clean, that was covered in mackerel scales. The boys are back in town. They're very impressed watching me catch those mackerel and bream. They think they're gonna get something, they get getting off cuts, that's all they're getting. Just wanna see that fin cutting up through the shark's lick there, right up the middle. Come on, let's have a few more. Oh yes. I remember having a word with you just now. <laughs> Mackerel scales and cold sausage sandwich. You don't get that in restaurants. Well right, guys, packing up time. Frank is still going here. The old Franken rod, look at this jumbo, jumbo mackerel. Absolute spanking great big mackerel. So, it's packing up time. I see tiny hooks and tiny bits of bait on the bottom. Get your fish like this. Sweet. This is the proverbial last cast. Even Frank cast, look, he's a good little rod. Well, he's half a rod, isn't he? <laughs> Once that hits the bottom, it's a question of saying. Thanks for watching this cold, not wet, but windy portion of 
the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, hit the subscribe button, hit the TA Outdoors, and look at this setting. This is my office. I'm packing up literally in minutes. I've ended up getting quite a few fish at the end of the day. Nothing big. Hey ho, that's the way it is here. In Britain, we get lucky or we don't get lucky. But as the saying goes, you've got to be in it to win it. We'll see you guys in the next episode. So here we go guys, gonna to to talk loud because the engine's going. Proof that the trolling leg works. Small fish, they haven't been able to trip it out like I said like that. It would normally trip just there. Look, watch, it slides down. What do I got? Ha <laughs> I love it. I love it when a plan comes together, people. I love it. There you go. I can do no more than say there is a trolling lead and there are some deep trolled mackerel, gratefully accepted. Nothing on the albacore rod. Now, if you had bigger fish than this, they'd obviously be able to trip that lead out. Boys, it works, and this is not the same two, by the way. There we go, the lead's tripped this time. Only a small mackerel, but it's a fish. Nothing on the uh, albacore line here. just a day fishing at sea in some very uncomfortable conditions but I toughed it out and I still managed to scratch a few fish up. Happy days. Now on to what I call random stuff and maybe theory time. Oh yeah and it's sort of I'll try and give you an update on other stuff. I went up the river Y. If you look on our Facebook you'll see I had this juice. Look at that. The tyre exploded on me on the cart barrow. Well, yes, yes, I get it, it's funny. It wasn't funny at the time, as I had to drag all my film camera tackle equipment back about a thousand yards through everything across the field, but I got it all back. So, lesson learned, take a spare wheel. Another thing I've got, going through the cupboards, having to clear out some of Mike's stuff here. I found these, look. I think they're quite good. I don't know where they come from, but they were mics. They are now <coughs> mine. Um, they're metal signs. If you can see those, and I'm going to get those maybe up in the back here. Just something else to put up. Oh, there's a couple of nice signs there, and they're metal. So I'm guessing they come from America. So, you know, they're, they're better quality, better quality ones. So what else we've got to run through now? 
Let's have a look, get the specs on. I do like the bream fishing, I do like a bit of light tackle bream fishing, I must admit, anyway. Oh yeah, you know I build things out of pallet wood. I've actually got pallet films to go up, to be honest. I found some incredible pallet wood, really good quality. Now, in some countries, you say you've got to pay for them. Well, here in the UK, I'm just saying to DIYs and people that want to do stuff, I've never paid for a pallet in my life. I just have the courtesy to go up to an industrial estate somewhere and just, or anywhere, uh, see pallets and ask them, can I take the pallet or are you using them? Most of the time, they're happy for you to take them. But Mike's got a battery powered Makita circular saw. Has that made things easy or what? I can now go and pick up big pallets like this one. Well, I had a major result here. Found a pallet, a really big pallet. Wait for this one. Look at that. I stripped it all down. It's taken me a while to strip it down. That, folks, is 10 feet long. That's a big, big pallet. And I guess four inches there. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's about 14 strips there, 10 feet long. I wouldn't want to buy all this stuff. And look there. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twenty-four of these. Probably four inch by not quite one inch, might be three quarters of an inch. So really good balls there. Please with that. Just goes to show you what you can save, what you can salvage and save. And that'll get used on another project. I'm not sawing that one up for uh, log burner material. And the blocks in between it are these. So if anybody does get them, don't try and put these on the uh, they're like compressed chipboard or something, I don't know. But they're very hard. Don't get me wrong, but they don't burn. They are a waste of time. So I put them in a bag and they go to skip when I go. So a lovely lot there of wood. Well, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to build with all that lovely pallet wood. I'm certainly not going to put it on the log burner. Now then, I'm a bit concerned about our deer population. We've mentioned about and some of you guys I'm on the comments page admitted that there are seem to be less wild birds around now. We don't know whether it's 5G, pollution, what the heck it is, could be any of those theories out there as to why the deer aren't about. But the first time we got this place where we bought it, don't get me wrong, I'm near an urban area, it's moving in on me fast, housing estates everywhere, so I'm on a probably limited time here. Outside is fields, wild fields. With more people walk around the estates, more people are going walking. It's killed the natural deer uh, viewing that we used to see. Whether they've all been killed or whatever and eaten it by cars, I don't know. But the first time I ever went here, when we lived here, I went out with my daughter and the first evening we counted 14 deer, wild deer, in the last, the fading light, on a walk around about half a mile. It was, I'm going to say, that good. So I've barely seen a deer now and this is outside my fence which is which is all fields. I don't know what's happening to the deer. Does anybody else have any ideas? Any ideas? Deers? Okay. Any ideas? I like that one. About why why there are less deer are there less deer around because I thought the deer was a population explosion which is why they had deer stalkers culling the deer. I don't know. Maybe it's just here in this corner of Hampshire is getting so overbuilt that the human population is pushing the deer further and further and further away. Talking about wild creatures like that, as you know, we have an immense Colin the Kite that lives here, which is probably a female, but we call him or her Colin the Kite. He goes up in a predator tree, you obviously have, there's a mate and there's a small one this year, three of them. But I'm telling you, Colin is really, really big. Well, I got the rarest footage ever of two different species of, of predator, terrestrial, I'm going to call it aquine, is that the word? Water-based. Yes, up in our predator tree, no less than, Colin the kite, within a matter of six, four to six feet from a big, huge heron. That's got to be unusual, surely, goodness. I have never ever seen those two predators that close together. Quite something to see, um, I think I'm lucky to film it to be honest.
and talking about predators and the lack of, I put the trail cam out, I used to get my lights off, to be honest, I used to get my security lights, I've got 360 security lights all the way around the house, big ones, you know, those LED giant ones, boom, lights up everything, that's fine, except the fox sets them off. Well, the fox hasn't been setting them off for some time now, and I guess it coincides with when there seem to be less birds around on it, even on their bird feeder. There's less of everything coming around. So, has the fox population reduced, stroke, expired? I don't know. But here are some clips of when I had a really nice fox come around on the trail cam, which I put down underneath the dovecote. It was a few trout pellets were scattered around. I mean, beautiful condition fox. But... I know he's not coming because I've put other stuff out there as well and he's not come back for them. I want to know why he's not come back. There's nothing on the road in the shape of Mr. Flat Fox. So he hasn't been hit by a car. I've no idea why the foxes and a lot of the wildlife... Listen, are other people out there, please tell us in the comments page, are you notice, noticing some form of reduction in the wildlife? Well, there you go, guys. A little bit of theory time. Let us know what you think about the reduction in the wildlife in the UK and what is causing it. Meanwhile, I'm going to get back out there, get you guys another fishing film. Hit that subscribe button, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors. You people know the score. I'll get out there and I'll try and do my best to bring you a film for next week. See you next time.